Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is my second video in the New Gardener series for growing tomatoes. And today we're going to walk through the garden. I'll show you the tomatoes that I planted. I'm going to talk about spacing, um, staking them, and mulching. And then I'm going to link a video in the description and eye cards and at the end that shows you how to plant them. I've already done an extensive video on doing that, including planting them from seed. So I don't want to redo all that for this video. So here are two tomato plants. First thing you want to consider is how close you put them together. If you have some experience and you're comfortable with managing the diseases and pests that come in your area, you can put them a little bit more closely together. This is about two feet. I think that's about, what is that, uh, 60 centimeters, I think 30 centimeters to a foot. Two feet's a pretty good distance, a pretty good compromise. I've grown them closer together, but they take a lot of work maintaining and pruning them. So you want your distance to be about two feet to three feet, and that'll be perfect for your tomatoes. Now you have your indeterminate variety tomatoes, which will continue to grow six, seven, eight, nine feet. They continue to grow until a frost comes and takes them or disease takes them. You have your determinate variety tomatoes which will get to a set height, flower, fruit, and they produce over a couple week period of time and then you usually have to replace them. What I'm talking about today is mostly the indeterminate varieties. I'm also going to show you ways that you can use them. So for instance if you have a small raised bed. This is three feet by six feet, I think. I've just dropped in one beefsteak tomato at the end, and that will grow straight up six, seven feet right here, and that'll be great, you know, for a couple of people in your family. Usually I recommend one beefsteak type, something that gets the size of a baseball, and a cherry tomato for a family of, you know, two or three. One thing to keep in mind, too, is to think about how you plant them. That's the other thing I wanted to cover. My son goes from there all the way around out to there and it sets on that side. You want to put your tomato plant where the sun is not going to cast, cast shade on the rest of your garden. So my tomato plant will go here, the shade's going to come this way, and I'll be able to plant other plants along here over the season. Alright, let's go to another grouping of tomatoes. Now if you're not growing in earth beds, maybe you have a smaller garden and you're growing on a patio, here's a tomato plant, indeterminate variety, that is growing in a 22 gallon metal container. If you're going to grow in containers, you have to have holes in the bottom. You never want water to be sitting in there. And in the past I've recommended that the minimum size of a gallon for a gallon container would be five gallons for a tomato plant. That requires a lot of maintenance to keep the water going. So now I recommend a seven to ten gallon container. There's a conversion chart in my um, description if you want to check out what that would be in liters. Seven to ten gallon container and you essentially need to make sure you can manage the moisture. If the moisture runs out of there just one time it's going to damage the root system, it's going to stress out your plant. So the more space you have, the better. So here's another raised bed, 4 by 8 These are my cool weather crops that will be done by the time this uh, tomato plant starts to mature. Again, it's on this side because the sun is all going to be that way and the shade will cast this way from the tomato. You always want to put your larger plants to the back opposite to the sun if that makes sense. So if I put that tomato up front there, it's going to cast shade all over it. So I put it to the back, the shade's going to fall into this path. And it's a basic setup. Again, I'll be linking the video to show you how to plant them. And this is lightly mulched up. We'll go over that today too. Mulch is great to use because it keeps the moisture in your soil and you water less. Consistent, even watering really supports a tomato plant. You never want the root system to dry out. Here are three tomatoes. The two on the right are about two feet apart, 30 centimeters. And you can see that their grass mulch is already down. When you're using green grass clippings, make sure there's no chemicals sprayed on there, no weed and feed, or it will damage your plant. It has to be clean grass. Put down about an inch. You don't want to make it too thick or it'll get smelly and slimy. After it browns out like that, next time you cut the grass, you can put another inch on there and it'll really, again, help keep the moisture in. That's a little bit of compost on top. I'll show you how to do that towards the end of the video. So about two feet apart to three feet apart. And then you want to put a stake in. When the plants are small, about four inches away, if you're a little bit late in getting the stake in and the plants are bigger, maybe go six inches away. That's just so you don't strip any roots away from the main stem or not a lot of them anyway. This is eight feet tall. 
These indeterminate varieties will easily get that tall and we're going to grow them vertically up the stake. You don't want them crawling all over the ground and being unmanageable. If you want to subscribe to the series, I'll show you how I do that. I'll show you how I prune the plants, take care of diseases and problems and everything along the way. Now these plants are in a little bit of a different place. You can see this shadow is coming over here. The sun is right over there now. It's going to rotate this way. So the shadows are going to rotate around the garden. Sometimes you have to do that. So if you can't put them in a place where the shadow stays away, put them in a place so that the sun will track and cover all the garden, if that makes sense. My sun is back there. That side will get it later on. It's over here and the shade will be cast onto them. That's okay, as long as it's getting six hours of sun. The reason for that is I'm gonna be growing cucumbers or cantaloupe up here, and they're gonna be casting this shade away. Right over here, I have a four foot by four foot space. These are pretty much spaced out two to three feet. This is perfect for a little tomato garden. Four plants would be, be great. They're gonna need the tall stakes in there. Usually I drop them in, let them get established a little bit, I put the stakes in later. In the corners, I'm actually growing lima beans, which hopefully this will be high enough, I'll have to prune a little bit, but I'm gonna have lima beans around here. The sun will come in this space, the tomatoes will do great, and this is gonna be a little tomato and lima bean garden. Again, no mulch on there. We definitely wanna get mulch down, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end of the video. Now this is kind of fun, this is not something you know, you need to do right away, especially if you're first getting started. This is cattle panel, arched out. Um, it's about an eight foot arch, and I have one that's uh, yellow pear tomato plant didn't make it. But I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five tomatoes on this side, all cherry type, four on the other side, and I'm gonna grow and weave them right up the trellis. If you wanna, again, subscribe, I'll show you how that goes. So that I can walk from that side through here and have a whole bowl of different kinds of colored cherry tomato plants. And this is uh, new to my garden, but you can have a strategy where you would actually grow up a trellis. Let me show you where I'm doing that, um, sort of not in a specialty way, right over here. So here's that same cattle panel on its side. It's 15 feet long and I'm going to weave the tomato plants that are down there up through there. They may still need a stake. These two are indeterminate varieties. The tomatoes down here, the ones that survived the frost, are determinate, but this is another way that you can manage the size of your tomato plants and really trellis them upwards. Uh, the white dust that you see throughout the garden is actually a, a, a BT dust, which is to stop chewing insects. I, for some reason, have holes in all of my tomato plants and the chewing worms are coming to my cabbage. I'll be doing a video on that and describing more what that dust is. It's an organic dust. So these are a couple ways that you can plant your tomatoes, a couple ways that you can trellis them. And the whole idea is don't overcrowd them, mulch them, give them something to trellis up, and that will help you manage moisture, diseases, and really just manage the tomatoes in a better way. You'll have a better experience. Please look at the video that I'm linking to this video. It will show you how to plant how to set it up with fertilizer or organic fertilizers, and how to water it in with a water-soluble fertilizer. All right, let's get to mulching up some of these. All right, we're gonna start in this area. I've got some dried grass, which I'll put down as the mulch. You can see leaf grow down, that's compost. You can put the compost down first around the plant, a couple of handfuls, and then put the grass on top. You could put the grass down first like I did here, compost on top or you could do both. It just depends on what resources you have available. If you don't have compost, um, you could put a handful of granular fertilizer down. But again, that's in the video that I'm linking. So once this is set up with the mulch, I'm gonna drop in a few more of the stakes. I'll show you how to use the tomato cages. You can do that temporarily if you don't have stakes right now. And just get this set up for really letting the tomatoes grow now that the warm weather is rolling in. So mulch does a couple of things. I'll talk about those. So I just went through, kind of loosened up the soil, knocked down any weeds, and I am going to put another handful or two of compost around the plants. It's great to put on the surface. Your soil life will like it. When it rains, it'll wash in. And your tomato plants actually send out a lot of surface roots, so they'll get any of the fertilizers you put on top. That's what a top dressing is called. When these get much bigger, 
they start to set fruit, we're going to do a top dressing. I'll explain that in future videos. We'll give uh, this plant a little bit more. So here we put down about an inch of grass. It dried, we can put more down. I also like to label everything because I definitely forget things. So here's some mostly dried grass. And this is all you really do is just drop it around and mulch around the tomato plants. Now this of course will keep the moisture in. That's the main purpose. But it also creates a disease splash barrier. What that means is any soil borne diseases, when rain hits this, it splashes soil up. That's not going to happen when you have mulch down. So that's one benefit of mulching. Moisture control is another benefit. And this will also feed your worms, your soil life. It will break down, it becomes compost. That's the third benefit. I highly recommend using your grass mulch. Just make sure, again, I can't stress it enough, that you don't get bags of grass from a strange source. Most of the time they have weed and feed in there. That will damage your plants. Don't use your lawn grass clippings if you've put down chemicals. After you're done, if you want, you can throw in a handful of compost just like that. Okay, let's stake these up. All right, this is what this space looks like done. A couple ways to trellis. That's a tomato cage. It's a three-tier cage. You want to put this in, and then if you're going to put posts inside, you want them to come out through the cage so that if the cage moves with the weight of the tomato, the posts are supporting it. And this will grow up. You want at least six feet worth of stakes, and that'll be perfect. If your tomato is growing seven or eight feet, you're going to be thrilled anyway, and you're not going to be worried that it's overgrowing your trellis. These are six feet tall, hammered in. So when you're buying a post, that's going to be a single stake. You want it to be at least eight feet because you are actually hammering, hammering, yeah, hammering it in about 18 inches or so so that it will support a heavy tomato. Okay, let's go over to the group of four. We're going to put down shredded hardwood on there. All right, so in this space, about one inch of the double shredded hardwood, a couple handfuls of compost went under it around the tomatoes that was already there. And this will set you up again, manages moisture, keeps weeds from coming up, great for worms and soil life, creates a disease splash barrier. So shredded hardwood, you can use whatever you want. There's another space where I put tomatoes in and put the grass down. About, depending on you know how much sun you have, how hot it is, seven to 14 days after the green grass you put down, that one inch of green grass dries, becomes brown, you can go ahead and put another inch down. And you're just keeping it well mulched. And you can do that for the whole season. Later on in the fall, when your uh, garden is done, you can turn all that grass into there and it really becomes um, nice organic matter for your soil life. Hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you some ideas of how to use tomatoes in your garden, where to plant them, how to plant them in containers. Pay attention to how the sun comes across your property so that you don't get shade being cast where you don't want it to be and please subscribe i'll be doing a series for the entire year on how to grow tomatoes for new vegetable gardeners thanks for watching please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com